today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the effects of domestication on the brain. Um, I know right now we're studying neurology, so I figured that this would be an appropriate topic. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand as I go, and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. So um, first I wanted to start off with uh, explaining some of the brain structure that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, one structure that is going to be important to my topic is the amygdala. Um, it's a group of neurons that's involved in emotional and behavioral functions. Um, namely, it helps with helps in controlling fear and aggression, and it's associated with uh, fight or flight behavior. Um, and one pretty cool piece of information is that uh, they have evidence that it's enlarged in humans that have been diagnosed with anxiety. Um, that'll uh, correlate later in my presentation. Um, it's part of the limbic system in the brain, uh, which the limbic system is functions in motivation, learning, um, emotions, and the limbic system also influences the endocrine system and the autonomic nervous system, or the involuntary nervous system. And also, we're going to be looking at this medial prefrontal cortex right here. And um, its function is in personality expression and controlling of emotional behavior. So if anyone has, uh, anyone has a short temper, <laughs> We're also going to look at uh, the difference between gray matter and white matter in the brain. Um, gray matter contains the cell bodies of neurons and unmyelinated axons. Uh, we looked at myelination yesterday, and also uh, the gray matter contains glial cells. That's been a common answer on some of our tests, uh, a trick answer, but we'll look at that. Those are. Uh, the glial cells help function in structure and insulation of the neurons. White, we're going to look at white matter as well, and the white matter is the myelinated axons, and greater myelination equals the faster neural signals. As we looked at the um, action potentials yesterday, uh, the axons and the <coughs> myelination helps to carry those action potentials to other regions of the brain, or to other parts of the body. And here's just a closer look at uh, this, where you have the gray matter and the neurons, and this is the cell body of the neuron. And then down here is this axon covered in the myelin sheath and the glial cells as well. Now, obviously, there's um, temperamental and physical differences between wild and domestic animals. Um, look at the difference between wolves and dogs. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on rabbits. So as you can see, there's definitely a difference physically between this wild rabbit here and then the domestic rabbit. But what are some of the internal changes that occur in the brain that we may not be aware of? Um, with DNA sequencing, we've been able to look at that uh, the, the DNA code shows that there might be changes in the brain that we haven't looked at yet um, due to the domestication process. Now the research study that I'm going to be explaining today um, looked at brain architecture or brain structure in domestic and wild rabbits. Um, one of the key key things that they focused on in this study was Charles Darwin's quote, no animal is more difficult to tame than the young of a wild rabbit, and scarcely any animal is tamer than the young of a tame rabbit. And that's what we're going to be looking at today and kind of finding out why that is true. Um, in this study, they did an analysis of the gray matter volume using MRI, and they did what, what, what they called a region of interest study so that they looked at the specific regions in gray matter and tried to pinpoint what, what places were changed specifically. They also did an analysis of the white matter structure using water diffusion to evaluate the amount of myelination or the um, 
axon structure and see if that was changed between the two. And with this, they also considered the size of the rabbit two different ways and um, to see how that compared to the brain size. Some of the rabbits that they used in this study, they did um, MRIs on eight wild rabbits and then they did eight domestic rabbits of various breeds. Um, some of the breeds they included were this California rabbit, the French lop, and the New Zealand white. And, if, and this picture also just helps to illustrate some of the sizing differences between like the wild rabbits and then compared to some of the domestic rabbits. Now this chart, um, these graphs show the results that they got by comparing the brain size with the body size. Um, as you can see, the domestic rabbits are about four times larger than the wild rabbits. Each one of these dots represents a rabbit that they did the MRI scans on. Um, but in general, proportionally from body size, there's not a huge change in brain size, which is pretty interesting because it, it just went against their, um, their hypothesis, essentially. But we're going to look at here, then when they did the region of interest analysis on the gray matter, um, this explains why there was no overall volume change. Um, even though there was not this huge volume change, they did find change in the amygdala and the medial prefrontal cortex. Um, amygdala were bilaterally smaller in domestic rabbits, bilaterally because um, the amygdala is on both, both sides of the brain, um, and bilaterally means that it um, shrunk on both sides, not just on one specifically. Um, so, yeah, the amygdala were smaller in domestic rabbits by about 10%. And then they also broke down regions in the amygdala to look at if um, only specific regions were changed or if overall the amygdala was changed. And they found that specifically it's changed in areas affected with, associated with um, efferent and afferent processing. As we learned yesterday, efferent is going away from the brain and going out, and afferent is going to the brain or coming in. And then forming stimuli relationships. So those relationships would be like if you touch a hot stove and you find out that's hot, you're forming um, a stimuli relationship between the pain and the, um, the stove, essentially. And what we can gather from this is that domestic rabbits are slower at processing information and responding to this information. Um, it makes sense because domestic rabbits aren't tasked with um, avoiding predators. They don't have to have this quick information processing and responding, especially if they're just going to be living in someone's house or living in a cage all day. They don't, they don't need that part of, of the amygdala. And here's just um, a picture of, this is the amygdala, and this is the amygdala um, with a, in the rostral view or the frontal view of the brain. Um, and this is just showing some of the areas that were affected specifically. And also they determined that the medial prefrontal cortexes were bilaterally larger in domestic rabbits by about the same amount that the amygdalas were smaller. Um, now, this explains why the volume overall wasn't changed, because as one, as one part was shrinking, at the same time, the other part was um, getting larger. Um, and from this, we can gather that the domestic rabbits are more able to control their emotions. Um, they're not as quick to anger, which is probably a good thing if they're dealing with humans. <laughs> Um, also, the hippocampus and the interhinal cortex, um, they found changes in that, and I'll show you here. Here's where the hippocampus is located in the interhinal cortex, and, yeah. and then here we can see why they're not statistically significant. Um, 
at first, these black bars just show the um, statistical significance or, um, and if, if, it's if it's above this black bar here, that means that there was significant amount of change to say that there's a correlation. Um, when they first did their calculations, all four of these regions here show that there was significant change, but with this um, Bonferroni, Bonferroni correction that they did, um, it showed that only the amygdala and the medial prefrontal cortex were significantly changed. Um, this correction that they did just helps to eliminate uh, false positives, but at the same time, there is the risk of false negatives. So um, before we can rule out that the hippocampus and interhinal cortex are really changed, the, um, more studies would need to be done. When they did the white matter analysis, they found that uh, while overall it was changed, there was not specific regions that were changed, um, unlike the gray matter. Uh, some of the differences they found uh, indicate reduction in neural speed and information, information processing in domestic animals. So again, the domestic rabbits are a little bit slower. They don't have, um, they don't have as great ability to process the information that they're taking in. Um, and they didn't really specify what, what changes they found in the white matter, but uh, the indication they gave was that there are density changes in the white matter, um, changes in the amount of myelination, and also in the axon diameter, which affects the neuron speeds. And again, this negatively affects the afferent and efferent processing. Some of the takeaways I want you to get from this is that uh, the selective breeding that we've done to domestic animals in general um, has resulted in changes of brain structure. And also that this doesn't just occur overnight. Um, domestication takes a lot of time and there's a lot of different factors that play into it. Um, but so before the brain structure can be changed, it takes millions of years or so. Um, and I'll show you another example that's a little bit different here in a sec, but, um, but essentially our, our breeding techniques are changing the animals that we know. Um, and yeah, domestic rabbits have a lessened fight or flight ability and then their learning ability isn't as great. And then domestic rabbits are a little bit slower mentally than wild rabbits. And it all just plays into, that's not what we're breeding them to have. Uh, we're breeding them to be nicer, to um, be tamer to humans. Uh, we're breeding them for their color, their size. Um, not, we're not breeding them to be anxious or scared of us. And um, all these differences that we're seeing in function are all essentially due to the changes in structure. Um, the structure of the brain equals the function of the brain. And then um, just a question to kind of put in your mind is, what are some other differences in other domestic animals that we could be breeding for, but we're not aware of? And are, are these all good or not? And another uh, somewhat related experiment is that of Dmitry Belyaev. Um, he was a uh, Russian geneticist, and he attempted to breed a nicer fox, or to essentially domesticate the fox. Um, he managed to do this in only 60 years, and not all the results he was uh, intending to get. Um, he only bred for tameness, uh, they would take out any foxes that were um, mean or snapped at humans, and they essentially wouldn't let them breed. And they would only breed the nicest ones. And after only 60 years, they started to see changes in, uh, in the size of the fox, in the face shape, and um, 
from this experiment, though, they're only focusing on the genetic changes along with the physical changes that appeared in the foxes. But from the rabbit experiment, we could almost inference that, the, that similar changes are occurring in the fox's brain structure, such as the um, shrinking of the amygdala and the enlargement of the prefrontal cortex. Um, but further studies would need to be done to conclude this. And that's all I have. Thank you very much.